Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 4. In this lesson, we're on Chapter 6, 6.6, .6, and how you solve differential equations by separating the variables. Now, a differential equation is an equation that involves dy by dx or d2y by dx squared, or any higher order powers. When they say a first order differential equation, which is what we'll be looking at today, a first order differential equation is an equation which involves dy by dx, but nothing higher than that, not d2y by dx squared or any higher order differentials. And what we'll be looking at is differential equations of the form dy by dx is equal to some function of x times by some function of y. And some differential equations of this form can be solved by separating the variables. Now, separating the variables really has a form of the chain rule working in the background. And this is what you would get for this type of equation. The integral of 1 over g of y dy is equal to the integral of f of x dx. You don't need to learn the formula, but just learn where it comes from. So if you've got a first order differential equation, what you can think about doing is the g of y swapping sides. Instead of timesing by it, you divide by it. So that gives you the 1 over gy. The dy on the top stays where it is. Uh, the f of x stays where it is on the right-hand side. And what it feels like is that the dx has moved from the left-hand side to the right-hand side to join it, as if it were a fraction. And treating dy by dx a bit like a fraction is really what is often going on when you use the chain rule. OK, let's have a look at an example of how this works out in practice. Find the general solution to dy by dx equals 3x squared y, and then find the particular solution if when x is 2, y equals 2. We'll look at the two parts separately. So first of all, part 1. Find the general solution to this differential equation. Now, the process of separating the variables is the process of creating an integral on the left-hand side with respect to y and an integral on the right-hand side with respect to x. And what it feels like, and certainly the way you can treat it, is the y swap sides, and we divide by it, so we get 1 over y, the dx swap sides, and we multiply by it, so we get 3x squared dx. So that would be the first step, rewriting the differential equation in this form. That's what's meant by separating the variables. The y's moved over here to join the dy, and the dx's move over to the right-hand side to join the 3x squared. As I say, strictly speaking, a version of the chain rule is what allows us to do that. From here on, it's a completely normal question. You carry out this integration on the left, and you carry out this integration on the right. I'll let you have a go at doing that. So pause the video, try and finish this, and then come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look at this. So integrating 1 over y gives us log y. Integrating 3x squared gives us x cubed. And we need to add an arbitrary constant. Now, we've been asked to write the answer in the form y equals f of x. And that is normal when you're finding the general solution to a differential equation. Normally, what you would like is y on its own is equal to some function of x. Now, to do that, we need to deal with this log. And the way you deal with log is always the same. We do e to the power of both sides. So e to the power of log y, e and log cancel, and we'll just give us y, and e to the power of x cubed plus c on the right-hand side. And we could leave it there, but um, it would be normal to tidy up the constant a little bit. And the way we do that is by splitting this up into two parts, e to the power of x cubed times by e to the power of c, and then by saying e is a constant, c is a constant, so e to the power of c is a constant, and it's normal to simplify this constant just by calling e to the power of c a, and that'll give us y equals a e to the power of x cubed. That's the general solution to the differential equation. Now, part two asks us to find the particular solution given the boundary conditions that when x is zero, y is five. All we have to do is substitute y equals 5 and x equals 0 into here, and that'll allow us to find a and the particular solution. I'll let you have a go at doing that. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. OK, so putting in x equals 0 and y equals 5 gives us 5 equals a times by 1. e to the power of 0 is 1, which means that a is 5. And that gives us the particular solution for this equation, y equals 5 e to the x cubed. 
Okay, example two. Find the general solution to x times by x plus two times by dy by dx equals y in the form y squared equals f of x. Um, part two is finding a particular solution again, but it's part one where all of the hard work is. I'll get you started and, and then I'll let you carry on from there. So first of all, separating the variables um, means that we're going to bring the y over this side and get one over y. We're going to bring the x times x plus 2 over to the right-hand side and get 1 over x into x plus 2, and the dx is going to join it. So we get the integral of 1 over y dy is equal to the integral of 1 over x into x plus 2 dx. And that's separating the variables. So that's that process completed. Now we need to carry out the two integrations. Integrating the left-hand side is fine. Integrating the right-hand side takes a little bit of work. We've got an algebraic fraction here that we need to split up into partial fractions. So the first thing you're going to have to do is rewrite this as partial fractions, some constant over x plus another constant over x plus 2, and then integrate the answer that you get. Now, I'll let you have a go at doing that. So pause the video, uh, try and work your way through this, and then come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. As we said, it's the right-hand side, which is tricky. Um, we need to split it up into partial fractions, a over x plus b over x plus 2, which means we've got a into x plus 2 plus bx over x into x plus 2. And then we're really equating the two numerators because the denominators are the same. And the way we do that is, first of all, by saying, well, what happens if x is 0? Because it'll make this second term 0. Uh, the numerator on the left-hand side is 1. The numerator on the right-hand side will just be 2a. So 2a equals 1, which means a equals a half. Then letting x equal minus 2 to make this bracket 0. Again, the numerator on the left-hand side is just 1. And on the right-hand side, we'll have minus 2b, which means that b is equal to minus a half. That's what we've done so far. All we need to do now is uh, replace a by a half and b by minus a half. And that gives us 1 over x into x plus 2 is equal to 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2 into x plus 2. Having split it up into partial fractions, we can now carry out the integration. So on the left-hand side, we've got the integral of 1 over y. And on the right-hand side, this has changed into the integral of 1 over 2x minus 1 over 2 into x plus 2. Integrating, we've got to integrate these three terms. Integrating 1 over y gives us log y. Integrating 1 over 2x gives us a half log x. And integrating 1 over 2 into x plus 2 gives us a half log x plus 2 plus c. If you get confused on these logarithmic integrations, it's probably best to see that as a half times by 1 over x. And then when you integrate the 1 over x, you get the log x. And with this term here, to see it as a half times by 1 over x plus 2. And you're integrating the 1 over x plus 2 to get log x plus 2. Now then, a lot of tidying up needs to be done from here onwards. First thing I'll do is take out the half from these two terms. And then the next thing we're going to do is use the rule for doing log a minus log b, which is log a over b. So that'll give us a half log x over x plus 2 plus c. Then we're going to deal with this half here and take that into the logarithm, which will give us log of x over x plus 2 to the power of a half, using the power rule for logarithms. Now, this next step seems a little bit strange at first, but the best way to negotiate our way around this constant is to rename it as log a. So c is a constant, log a is a constant. And the reason for doing that is we can then join together these two terms. So we've got log a plus log b, which is the log of a times by b. So these can be joined together to give us the log of a times by x over x plus 2 to the power of a half. And the reason for doing all of that is now we've got the log of something on the left-hand side and the log of something on the right-hand side, which means we can do inverse logarithm of both sides or e to the power of both sides. And that'll give us y equals a into x over x plus 2 to the power of a half. Just going back to what the question asked us to do, it asked us to write the answer in the form y squared is a function of x 
Well, that's easy enough. We just need to square both sides of this. And that'll give us y squared equals a squared. And squaring this term just gives us x over x plus 2. Again, the normal thing is to simplify this constant as much as you possibly can. So we'll rewrite that constant uh, as b. And that gives us the general solution, y squared equals b times by x over x plus 2. Part 1 is where all the hard work was in this question. Part 2 is a lot more easy. Uh, we just have to find the particular solution, given that when x equals 2, y equals 2. So we substitute x equals 2 and y equals 2 into this and find the value of b. I'll let you have a go at doing that. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. So substituting x equals 2 and y equals 2 into there gives us 4 equals b into 2 over 4. And that gives us b is equal to 8, which allows us to write down the particular solution to this differential equation. y squared equals 8x over x plus 2. OK, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 86 and have a go at exercise 6f. Thank you very much for listening and cheers.